So we see that uh, the amplitude of probability to go from one event to another is the sum of phasor. In fact, it's proportional to the sum of phasor. So we could have a constant in front um, of the sum over the path. A phasor being a complex number, it is convenient to represent it in uh, the complex plane with a real and an imaginary part defining the axis. Of course, the uh, norm of a phasor is just one, so it's going to be uh, located on the unit cycle in this complex plane. So if we look at the path we have um, uh, shown here in this figure, we uh, each of these paths is going to produce a, a phasor, uh, which we will have to sum in order to get the amplitude of probability. So, um, for instance, the black path will um, uh, give a phasor maybe like that. Um, the orange one will have um, another phasor, etc., etc. So at the end, when we sum all these phasors, you see that some of them are going to cancel each other. For instance, the purple one uh, is exactly opposite to the orange one. So when we take the sum of these two vectors, this uh, is going to be zero. So at the end, these two paths are not going to contribute because they cancel each other. We see that um, the phase is a ratio of uh, the action divided by h bar. So let's consider two cases. One case where the uh, action s is typically of the order of h bar or even smaller, and another case where the action is much larger than h bar. Let's consider um, one path in the first case and the corresponding phasor in the complex plane. The action is defined for a given time between the two events. So it's obviously a function of this time. Um, if I take this time to be infinitely small, then the action will be typically zero. Um, and the phasor will just be 1. Now if we increase the time, uh, the action will acquire a small value and the phasor will start rotating. And so on until um, the phasor reaches its uh, final value. Because the action is smaller than h bar, we see that we didn't even achieve full rotation of the phasor in the complex plane. So if we take similar path uh, with an action more or less of the same order, we will have similar phasors. So summing phasors is like summing vectors in the complex plane. So we see that if we sum these three um, path, for instance, we get a much longer uh, vector uh, with a, a much larger associated amplitude of probability. So each of these paths um, build constructive interferences in such a way that the total amplitude of probability uh, is a, uh, really the sum, a coherent sum of all these paths. But in principle, we have to sum over all possible paths. So these paths are uh, relatively reasonable, so to say, and they uh, only have a small action. However, if I consider a path which becomes uh, some sort of, of crazy path where the particle goes up and down and do a lot of different things, uh, which would be very far from what we would expect classically, um, the resulting action will be much larger. So in particular, um, we will uh, soon at have paths which have an action uh, for which a phasor will do more than one rotation. And all these paths will then end up with phasors in all possible directions. Now, when we sum all these crazy paths, so to say, uh, we see that they will all cancel each other because a path with a direction, uh, from, for instance, to the northeast in the complex plane will be cancelled by the path with a direction to the southwest, etc., etc. So the only path which really contribute at the end to the total amplitude of probability are those for which the action um, is essentially less uh, 
than h bar or of the order of h bars in such a way that uh, the phasor doesn't do a full rotation in the complex plane. Let's now look at the second case in which all the paths will all have an action much larger than h bar. Uh, that would be the case for a classical system. So let's um, put some numbers. For instance, if I take a mass of one kilogram traveling over one meter during one second, the typical order of magnitude of the action will be one kilogram meter square per second. Now, if I compare that to h bar, h bar is an extremely small number of the order of 10 minus 34 uh, met kilogram meter squared per second. This means that um, the phasor will rotate about 10 to the power of 34 times for each individual path. And of course, 10 to the power of 34 is much larger than 1. This means that the phasors are going to end up in all possible directions in the complex plane. And therefore, the sum of the paths is going simply to give 0 because but of course, there is something wrong here because uh, if if all the the amplitudes cancel each other, then the probability for uh, the object to move becomes zero. Uh, that means that we in the classical object will all be frozen, which we know is not the case. So, um, in fact, we know that the object follows a classical object follows a classical path. And what's so special about the classical path is that the action for the classical path is stationary. That means that um, if I look at um, the classical path and its closed path next uh, to it, um, they, because the action is the same, um, their phasors are going to be aligned. So we see that the only path which is going to have a non-zero uh, probability is the classical path because this is the path which has a stationary action. 